the biggest misconception behind logos is that logos have to have meaning. But world-renowned logo designer Saki Haviv says otherwise. Stay tuned and I'll tell you more. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to day number 8 of Conversations with Jason. I'm super excited to have you guys here and super excited to talk to you guys about today's little subject. If you guys have, if this is the first time you've been here, welcome, welcome. This is a whole little channel series where what I'll be doing is sharing with you guys every tip, trick, resource, book, concept, idea I learn and I want to share with you guys in bite-sized knowledge regarding branding, marketing, advertising, business motivation, so on and so forth, right? So without further ado, let's jump into today's conversation. So today's conversation that I want to highlight is about logos, right? And the biggest problem that I see is that the biggest misconception about logos is that logos have to say a lot of things. Logos have to be logos have to be A B C D E F G H. They have to represent this. They have to resonate with this, and they have to. Uh, we have our clients, our customers have to see it and immediately like it. Right, but what world renowned uh, logo design, uh, Sagi Habib, as well as his comp as well as his agency, I, where he's a partner at, I'm not gonna pronounce it just because I know I will put your name. But what he says a logo is, is that a logo is not meant to communicate, it's meant to identify. Right, I'll repeat it again it's not meant to communicate, it's meant to identify. It's not the sentence, it, is the, it doesn't state anything. It's about the it's the end and the beginning of the sentence. It catches the eye of people, right? That's really what a logo is for. So the move towards more complicated logos where we actually have to include a lot of things are is actually um, is actually overthinking it because it's really about where you contextually put the logo, what you relate the logo to, and how it relates to your brand. That's what gives the meaning and the uh, contextual language to the logo, right? Uh, for take for instance, if you saw a uh, net. National Geographic's logo, um, the uh, the yellow yellow <laughs> rectangle, right? And this is uh, this is actually an example that he gave, right? Is that when you look at it, or if somebody that's never seen National Geographic before, if they saw it, they wouldn't know what that stands for, right? They wouldn't understand what that rectangle is. There is no meaning behind it. But after contextually, when they see the various locations, right, from the magazines to the to the TV shows, to the whatever it is, right, to the YouTube videos, they see that same yellow square, and that contextually gives people the framework to understand that logo represents National Geographic. So, making your logos as easily identifiable and easy, re easily recognizable, easily um, put in different places, applied to different uh, different backgrounds, right, is what's gonna help you make a compelling logo that's gonna last through the years, right? A logo is meant to last through the ages, not meant to change with the brand because a lot of things can change with the brand, right? The brand design, the brand color, the brand things, but the logo should be the one thing that's stagnant because the logo is what represents the company, right? So it's very important to actually, uh, it's very important to actually make sure that your logo is something that's a be something that's able to be applied in various locations. Um, I do remember hearing somebody, I do not specifically remember who, but somebody mentioned that you, uh, if your logo should be able to look great in black and white too, right? If it doesn't look great in black and white, you did you have a bad logo. <laughs> I, I definitely um, need to take some time to actually relook at my logo and see what I can do to see what should represent me myself uh, personally, right? But uh, aside from that, um, what one way that um, Saki Haviv actually does to actually help uh, visually test the logo's validity, right? Is really about taking that same simplistic logo and applying it to various different backgrounds, right? It can be different colors, it can be different textures, it can be different um, backgrounds of like people, whatever it is, right? Um, just to see how the logo fits in all the various uh, locations, artwork, and everything. And you might say that if, if you were a person that was designing a logo, you would mention to people like, oh no, everything would be in a very same, like a very uh, safe, safe 
safest location because you can just tell people that like this is the use cases you should be using it with these different colors and things but the fact of the matter is some a lot of times people would just use a logo however they want to right because it's not your logo it's their logo so they'll they, chances are they might use it for something else that it's not designed for so making sure that your logo is able to actually um, your logo is actually able to uh, be present in all the different kinds of uh, background from all the different kinds of uh, colorscapes, uh, backgrounds, uh, different environment right is really what's going to help your logo uh, seem timeless and that's really really important right and that's really all i have for you guys today really about that um let do let me know if this little episode is interesting i will link the video down to the futures where they did have a whole conversation hour-long conversation with uh, saki habib if you guys are interested in that i definitely do again recommend you guys go check it out it's definitely a super cool video that really um broadens your perspective on what a logo should be how you should be approaching logos and so on and so forth so that's all i already got today hope you guys have an absolutely amazing day i'll catch you guys tomorrow Tomorrow.